We've got NASA set up on the table right now. This is a Kickstarter preview for the next Stefan Feld game. They're running a campaign that has this and Kathmandu. Check out our Kathmandu video if you haven't already. This one, kind of like Kathmandu, is a brand new game. Kathmandu's brand new. This is, I'd say, 90% brand new. Yeah, this is what they call a re-implementation of Rum and Pirates. But if you've noticed this side of the board over here, this is what Rum and Pirates used to be. And this over here, including a lot of what you see Everything surrounding else. the board, <laughs> is all new. So we are taking that, that basic core mechanic of moving around the city of Nassau, collecting resources, and then leaving Nassau to sail around the Caribbean using the resources gained over here to spend over here in typical Feld fashion, gathering things that are going to score you points in a huge variety of ways. Feld is kind of known for what we call point salad, yes. where you're getting points from all these different directions. But what's interesting about this game is you're collecting things and there's usually a multiplier involved. Yeah. You're looking at something you've collected times something else. So there are so many different paths to victory and what you're scoring. You're not gonna be able to do them all. So you're just kind of like picking and choosing where you're gonna score your points like a buffet almost. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a point salad game. You're gonna be getting them from everywhere. Some of the things we have on the table, like the main boards you saw right here, this is the Nassau City, this is the Caribbean. We've got some boards around there. We've got, here's where you're going to tell your pirate yarns. You've got a cave that you can interact with and store some of the goods you've collected. Over here, you've got an island that has animals. You're gonna put the animals on top of some of the sailors that you have on your ship. You've got a bar or tavern where you can actually get more of the pirates you need to sort of navigate the city. And then finally, you've got a board here that represents the old sea the old bear. Sea bear. Yeah, this, this guy that floats around, you can meet him out in the sea and do some trading with him. Uh, and when I say meet him out in the sea, that is one of the facets of the game. This actual game is kind of broken into really three phases, but two of them that really matter. The Nassau City phase and the Caribbean Sea phase. I mentioned that you're gonna be moving around this board, gathering resources that you'll need later, but the way you do that is interesting. Each player is going to have a number of pirate workers that they can use to kind of make paths out on this board to move what they call the black pirate. He's like the pirate captain. Yeah. You're gonna be guiding him around these spaces, gathering materials wherever he stops. But to do so, you need to be able to place your pirates in such a way that you build out these paths and then move him from one path to the other. So as multiple players are contributing to that, you're opening up access to new items that you couldn't get before. Yeah, it almost feels like a little bit of an abstract game over here. Very strategic abstract game because there may be places you want to get to and where the Black Pirate is right then, you can't quite get there. There are some flexibility yeah. options there. You can use gold doubloons to sort of move two spaces, if you will, but you still have to use all of your pirates to get there. And then also, if you find yourself near the edge of the board, you can spend a gold doubloon, and if you don't have any points, to yeah. actually leave and you take the barge anywhere around to go to any one and re-enter the map to sort of yeah. change things up a little or bit. Or you could spend your turn just drinking some rum with the pirates and not moving anywhere, yes. basically skipping your turn. So if you don't want to give your opponents a really good path, you could wait and hope that they give you a good path because not all these spots are created equally as far as what they give you in terms of goods. And of course, like I said, with that point salad system, some of these spots are gonna be more valuable to you because they're giving you the things you need for your strategy, whereas maybe your opponent doesn't need those things as much. Yeah, and regardless of a lot of the things you're gonna be collecting, many of those things are going to come down here to your pirate ship. Each player is gonna have a pretty robust yeah. player board that's actually built, at least in this prototype, out of two pieces that make this ship. Over on the left, you're going to sort of collect weapons. These are going to be effectively the strength of various weapons. You all have to start with a one, but you can yeah. collect more and get up to a total strength of five in any one of those. Those are going to help you interact with things out over here. You're also going to have sails, which allow you to move further. Everyone's yep. going to start with one. And then you're going to have your sailors, the animals that go on top of them. The animals will do you no good. Unless they have a sailor to yeah, sit on the shoulder of. they need a companion of. to hang out with. And those animals are an incredibly important part yeah. of the game because not only, again, is this another scoring mechanic, each animal has some kind of variable power that's going to break the game. And so when you're 
deciding what you're doing out here in the Nassau City Board, you need to be looking at which animals are available in that draft because you might want to hit that at a very specific time because some of these animals, again, might work really well with your particular strategy. Yeah, and some of the other things that you'll be collecting that you hold down in storage down here, at least during the NASA phase, you're going to be collecting ammo crates. You're going to use those again to interact with some of the opponents and things you have to combat over here, but also provisions. And provisions are what is this game is all about, at least when it comes to getting over here. Provisions are going to be stored in, again, one of these storage areas. And you only have a few of these storage areas to begin with. You can open up two more. Yeah. And they have some limitations that make it very tricky in terms of really finding the efficiency there. Yeah, and you can only store a, one type of item in each one of these holds. So if you want to store multiple types of items or more than one of you know the same, like it can hold four ammo cubes. If you want eight, you have to use up two whole yeah. storage systems. Again, there are some animals that break those rules. But provisions and ammo and weapons are probably the most important things when it comes to the NASA part because once you're out of workers or you decide to pass, maybe you want to hold some pirates because they actually can be used on the Caribbean side. So you might end your turn short knowing you're going to save some workers to help you because they can be used in battle and they can also be used to hold down some forts out here, which is kind of important. What's really neat, and I mean, this is neat to me. I think this is a little added bonus. Whoever ends first gets to choose where they start first in NASA. And you notice that each one of those little ports is going to give you some goods. But you also get this cool little dolphin token that sits at the front of your ship, which, I mean, yeah. that's, it is you know, effectively that's kind of neat. The first player marker, but they've made it an actual piece of cardboard that goes on underneath the front of your ship. That is a very nice touch. Yeah, and wherever you start out in NASA, you can either start in the city or, like I mentioned, you can put those pirates out in forts. If you've done that, you can start a little farther out in the map. Each one of these spots is going to give you some bonuses, either provisions and some kind of other item that you're going to be used because every round that you spend in the Caribbean, you have to spend those provisions. So yeah. the more provisions you have, the more the more turns you can take out there. Yeah, they're effectively the actions you'll take during yeah. the Caribbean phase. You'll spend a provision to do a thing. To do a thing, you could be moving up to your movement and then interacting with one of the things where you finish. Now, there's a number of different yeah. things. We won't go into all of the details. Ryan already mentioned some of them. There's forts. There are trading posts in some of the places. The trading posts are going to basically reward you with a good as long as you have a certain number of weapons or different things that, on your pirate ship. To raid ship. that trading yeah, right. post effectively. I mean, we are still pirates. You're doing a little bit of raiding. You're doing that. You're taking the trading posts. You can also take control of these towers. These towers also want you to have a specific number of weapons. And then, of course, you can do battle out at sea, uh, what they call opponents in the game. It doesn't yeah. mean your opponents. You're nope. actually... Not the other players. There's no PvP. There's no raiding other players or stealing goods from other players. But you can raid a wide variety of these different types of things. There's ships. There's krakens. There's islands full of skeletons out in the Caribbean. <laughs> uh, and you can fight at those different places by having the right type of weapon. If you kind of look closely on the player board, you'll see that each one of these slots can hold these tokens. It shows you what rewards you get for battling them, and it shows you what weapons you need. Now, one thing I think that's really neat that they're doing here is that you get the reward, win or lose, yeah. which is nice. You, can, you kind of know you're going to get that reward. Even if you don't finish off the opponent, yeah. as you can see right here, there's a ship here that takes four cubes ultimately. When you interact with that, you're going to put on a number of cubes that you have, depending on the weapon that's required and or the sailors, whichever yeah. is the least. You put those out there, then you're actually going to go through this whole combat phase. Again, we won't get down into the weeds, but you're going to be drawing tokens equal to their strength. And those tokens can be anything from nothing happens, it's they're, they're evading you, uh, or they're attacking back. And you have to deal with all yeah. of those things. And there's a lot in the game that allows you to sort of navigate those, if you will, uh, to get through that. But like Ryan said, even if I don't put the fourth cube on there, I'm going to get four points and then some type of good. This, in this game, is one of those things, it's kind of like one of those glue aspects to kind of connect further turns. Because you might be out of ammo crates, but you could interact with one mm -hmm. thing there that gets you some more ammo crates so that you can then use your next provision on your next turn to interact with something else and spend those ammo crates. Yeah, and these are also worth points. Actually, basically everything you have out here that you're getting is worth points in some way. And like I mentioned earlier, they're all multipliers. So when you're taking these ships, if you actually defeat the ship or sink the ship, you get to put it on your player board. At the end of the game, you count up the total value of all your ships and multiply it by the number that you yeah. defeated. And that, that or number of opponents you defeated. And that can be a lot of points. The goods that you get from these forts uh, or from these trading posts 
can be turned in. And those are also worth a multiplier, the total number of points times the number you have. And the one interesting thing here yeah. about gathering these goods is every player wants to gather them in a very specific order. And if you don't gather them in this order, you don't get the maximum amount of points for them. But all of our orders are different, which makes it you're going for kind of different things. Yeah, I think that's really nice. It's a nice little touch to make it so that everyone's not going after the highest value thing. But for instance, I need red first. So if I deliver red here, I can put it on this where it's worth four points. Yeah. If I got a blue, which I happen to get in our game first, I could deliver it so that I can get it out of my ship so that it's not taking up some of my storage. Mm -hmm. But I have to put it over here in this one space. I can't put it on the blue space because I have to do that in order. Yeah, and of course, you're also getting points for those towers. You're counting up the total number of cubes times the total number of towers. So this is primarily the way that you're scoring your in-game points at the end of the game. Those little outposts that you can take don't necessarily score you points, but they do get you weapons. And like I said, they let you start a little farther out so you yes. can get to maybe some of the stuff you like a little quicker. But this phase is going to con conclude when everyone is ready for their journey home. Now, once you're out of those provisions, you have to start your journey, but you can start it early. Every player is gonna start their journey a little bit earlier. So you could have one player that's on the journey home while another player is still out here completing their uh, Caribbean phase. Yeah, and the journey home is comprised of three steps. There's basically, you could look at it as the last three steps of that yeah. phase two. The first one is going to be stopping here at the cave. When you stop here, that is your turn. And you can optionally, if you have some gold doubloons, spend them in order to unload some of those goods that you had onto this yeah. tile. Again, following that order if you can and right. or, or not. Or losing points <laughs> on that. And then the next thing you can do when you're back at your base, you're gathering around the fire telling stories of what you've done. You're gonna be collecting these pirate yarn cards as they're called. And each one of those is like an objective. It wants you to have something. You're not turning it in. You just need to have it or you need to have completed a certain milestone. You can bring rum to the fire and you can tell these stories. You can play up to three of these cards and these are going to give you victory points immediately for completing those objectives effectively. Yeah, these are pretty significant points. They can mm -hmm. be, of course, there's starter ones, then there's A's and B's and the B's are even juicier. Yeah. Uh, and then there's even a bonus and sort of a penalty depending on how many you scored that round. Yeah. Then they're all discarded. But this is a pretty significant aspect, again, of scoring more points in this game. Well, yeah, like I said, points just keep coming because once everybody's done with that phase, meaning everyone's completed the journey home, you're going to potentially score some more points during the riding of the ship phase, which is basically kind of a reset phase. This is where you're gonna reset the board, you're gonna pull all your workers back, but then you're going to score some extra bonuses. You're gonna get some more ammo crates based on the outposts you control over here. You're gonna get some extra cards if you've done damage to ships, and you're gonna score points for all the towers you've taken. So there's kind of a, almost like an income phase a little bit. You're gonna get some stuff in between, but then as soon as that's done, you're gonna go right back to the Nassau phase. These are gonna be all returned wherever the Black Pirate ended, that's where he starts, and you just repeat that process. Yeah, so it's really just those phases, and they all, I mean, we've talked about other games that felt like there were mini games. Yeah. This one definitely feels that way. There's not a ton of different mini games, but you've got this main thing going on, which feels like a completely different game than what you're doing over here. Of course, it sets up what you're doing over here. And then there's a lot of little, not mini games, but yeah. all sorts of different ways and things to think about as it relates to the points that you can score. Right. You can score them during the game, you can score them at the end of the round, and then there's a ton of end game yeah, points ton, with those multipliers. A ton of end game, and you can, you can score a huge amount of points at the end of the game. So this is definitely that style of game where you can choose multiple paths, you can go heavy on one, you can pick and choose kind yeah. of, and do a little bit of each one. And like David just said, two games that kind of combine together uh, I think in a, in a way that makes sense for the theme of the game. Yeah, I think if you played Rum and Pirates, or if you're familiar with that, this is going to bring so much more sure. that you're thinking, oh, okay, well, this is something worth noting. And if you're a fan of Felds, I mean, at least as it relates to being a point salad, it definitely feels like a Feld. There yeah. are certainly aspects that are going to be reminiscent of his other games. I would say this probably feels like one of the most thematic Felds it's definitely one of the more thematic. Ones. I mean, it really yeah. feels quite piratey. So if you're looking for a Feld piratey Euro, check out NASA. Yep. Take a look at their campaign. But if you have any questions about the game at all, please make them in the comments below. We'll get down there and answer whatever we can. Until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Bye.